Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Or afternoon or evening, wherever you are. We're going to be doing some um, kind of fall inspired landscapes today, kind of like these. If you are brand new, this is a great place to jump in because my little mini mountain silhouettes are my favorite thing to start by teaching because you learn a bunch of really cool things. You're working on Saturday. What do you do? Oh, hello to Chili. We're going to be getting started in about three minutes. Um, you're going to need some water, obviously, in order to wash your brushes and mix up some colors. You'll want some watercolors today. Any will do. Whatever you have is totally fine. You're going to want something to mix some stuff up. You might just use the wells in your palette, or you can grab something like that. And for the most part, I'm going to be using round brushes. They are my absolute favorite type of watercolor brush. You have this journal? Nice. Yeah, I've recently <laughs> come to the realization that, I mean, I like using my little pieces of paper, and I don't think I'll completely stop doing that, but I'd kind of like a little record of all the classes, so I'm going to try to start putting all my experiments and all of our class stuff in little journals that I can like easily stash away so I can look back and see what we've done. Hi Sunny. How are you doing today? How was your class and what type of landscapes did you do in your class this week? I'm going to give everybody just another minute to join before we get started today. Now, I am going to be working in this, but I'm also going to be taping off a little boundary so I can work on two at a time. And then I have a second notebook over here that I'll be doing some more into. So I'm probably going to be doing about four today just to make sure that I can work on a bunch of different ones to let them dry in between layers and so that if you guys have questions or things, I can kind of try to adapt and do another one. Anybody have any fun plans for Saturday? Or tomorrow? After this, I need to go finish making scones. I'm going to take a little tea party over to my grandparents' uh, yard to try to enjoy the last few nice days of fall. Homework? Oh, no. Island in Front Mountain to back. Nice. Hello to Texas. Oh, I'm sorry that you're sick. Yeah, I'm, I'm making... um. Just like normal vanilla with some uh, lemon zest scones and then some blueberry scones. I'm going to make a bunch of tea things. I've got this cute little like tiered thing. I'm going to just make a nice little tea party for my granny. Oh, fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Painting is always fun. I'm glad this is the perfect substitute. Well, it is 11, and for those of you who don't know, my name is Lacey. I am the artist behind Rebel Unicorn Crafts, and I do live watercolor classes here every Saturday just in case you want to get started and want some direction <laughs> in how to get started if you're learning or if you just want to be able to kind of shut down your brain and do this activity while you listen along or just paint with us and do whatever you want to. That's totally cool, too. We can just be nice company for you. Lunch with friends and a boat ride downriver. That sounds like fun. 
All right, so I'm gonna start by taping off two little rectangles on here, because as I said, I'm gonna be working in this sketchbook, but I still want them to have those nice little borders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape those down in here. I'm gonna be doing two on this page. And what do you guys wanna see as far as the sky for our landscapes? Are we thinking clouds? Are we thinking um, gray rainy days, sunsets, bright blue days? Days with just big fluffy clouds. Maybe do some leaves. We'll have to see because, yeah, I've got um, a little bit of a shortened time frame. So we're going to start with this. And if we can, we'll, we'll do some leaves at the very end. White puffy clouds. I'm seeing the most on that. And pretty colors. So you're thinking like sunsets. All right. We'll do fluffy clouds on the top one. And then we'll do a pretty sunset on the bottom one. So I'm just taping those off so I've got two little rectangles here. And this is just masking tape. This is actually the most common question I get, and I don't have a great answer for it because I literally just buy whatever the cheapest masking tape is. Um, I do that for a few reasons. One, I go through a lot of it, and I like to save the money. And two, the cheaper stuff is um, a little less sticky than like the 3M masking tape, so there's a slightly less chance that I rip paper uh, when I am taking it off. And washi is absolutely okay. I typically, uh, I use washi sometimes, but um, if I'm taping something down that's gonna get really, really wet, that's when I don't use washi tape because it doesn't seem to stick down as well. It will give you nice crisp lines though, so that's totally fine. Oh, well, I'm glad that you stopped by and I will see you next week. All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this to the side while I mix up some colors so that you can see what I'm doing better. And this palette I've been using recently is Stuart Simple's Colorious Color Palette. And uh, I'm doing this for a few reasons. One, I've been really liking this palette. Two, it doesn't have traditional names to the colors. And since we're all working with different color palettes, this way I can just kind of describe what the color is. And then you don't have to try to be bummed or you don't have to be bummed out when you don't have the exact color. So I'm going to wet those down. And I'm going to put a couple sprays in here because I want to get a nice bright blue color for our sky. So I have actually been experimenting with, um, I don't know how many people have been watching my videos for a while, but I did test the Koi tube pans and I was less than impressed with those. But I recently just tested, um, I'm going to make a video on it so you guys can see it, the Koi uh dry palettes, and I actually really like those. So yes, I would say these are pretty similar to that. Okay, so I put some fresh clean water here, and I'm just gonna grab, I'm actually gonna be grabbing a whole bunch of blues. I've also grabbed a little tester strip of um, paper, just so that I can actually test to make sure that this is the right color. So this is probably most similar to like a Prussian blue here. This one is like an ultramarine. And this one's like a cerulean. For my skies, I like to mix up a whole bunch of different blue colors if I have them accessible. And then we always want to test our colors because this looks like a super duper dark blue. And it's actually much lighter when we put it on the paper. The light absorbs into here so that you can't actually see how transparent it is, as well as our paper is basically our white when we are working with watercolor. So you always want to test. Now, I want this to be a little bit darker. You can mix up whatever color you want for your background color. Now, I do recommend that you follow, and I'll do this again once I get to the actual color, but follow at least the general opacity level or saturation level that I'm achieving, which kind of means that if I were to write something like hi right here and then I painted over it and I'll show you this when I get to the actual color. I want you to be able to see that word at about the same level that I can see this word. In order to get really nice big fluffy clouds, we need to be able to have quite a bit of contrast between what we're going to lift out 
and the color that's on our page. So we do want to make this a little bit more saturated with some of these blue colors. So I am going to slightly darken this a little bit just by adding in a little bit more of each of these and let's test that again. Haven't done much. All right, keep going. That's a little better. Now, one other thing you might want to consider, um, if you really like just this kind of bright blue, and by mixing a couple different blues, you're going to kind of instantly kind of mute it down or change the color a little bit. But if you do want to mute this color um, to be not so blue, 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 then you would want to take the complementary color, which is an orange, and add in just a little teeny, teeny bit. I'm going to definitely tap a bunch of that out. I took way more than I thought I was going to. And let's see if I took way too much. This is going to give it kind of a grayish or a slight muted effect, but I really like this color. So here's the color I'm going to use for my blue sky. And here is the general opacity level. You can still see it pretty well, but it is a darker color. So I don't have any moderators. I don't actually know anything about the moderation type stuff. Um, I'm pretty new to <laughs> doing digital content like this, I mean, within the last year. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, please let me know. We're using watercolor today. In general, I typically just try to keep an eye on the comments here. Yes, the color wheel is going to be your friend. We're just getting to know what colors you have in your palette. Thank you so much for helping out. I really appreciate that. Okay, so I've got my one color mixed up here. I'm gonna push that out of the way so we can see a little bit better. And I've got my blue color here. I've also got my paper. Now, the most important thing I have found when you're looking at watercolor paper is just make sure if you can to use 140 pound watercolor paper. It doesn't buckle quite as much. You can use heavier than that. And then you can like either cold press or hot press, that type of thing. But the main thing is just make sure it's at least 140 pound. Most of the time, the less than that, it's a lot harder to do a lot of the things with it. Cool. Well, thank you guys for the information. So far, I've been lucky. Let's keep our fingers crossed. I haven't really had very many trolls. So, so hopefully we'll keep it a troll-free zone where we don't need that because we're just trying to learn together and kind of hang out today. All right. Now, uh, in order to do this, we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be learning, um, oh, for GSM, 300 GSM. We're going to be learning two different things for this background. One is we are going to be doing a flat wash using a drip technique. And the second thing we're going to be learning a little bit about lifting. Now for my clouds, my favorite way to lift the clouds out is to actually take some paper towel, scrunch, and then I'm going to rip this so that I've got like a nice raw edge here with some of the natural fibers. Brand of watercolor is my favorite. Ooh, that is a... Really tough question. I am still trying to figure that out. I'm like on the fence about a, about 10 different brands. I like all of them for different things. And I use masking tape personally. Painter's tape is just a little more expensive. And um, I know some people say it's less sticky, but I typically just find it to be more blue. So <laughs> um, it works. It definitely works too. So we're going to be doing this flat wash, which means that we're going to be trying to cover the page with an even coating of color and water. The way you do this is you mix up a large quantity of water with some color in it, the color that you want to deposit. Make sure you've got a little bit more than you think you need so that you don't run out. Then you, you're gonna take a round brush, load it up with this color, take whatever you're working on and hold it at an angle so that we can have gravity on our side because we want to make a stripe across the top. And we want to use a whole bunch of water there, and this is why it's called a drip line technique. See how it's gathering because I'm holding this at an angle in a drip line. Then we reload and bring it down. Reload, grab that drip line, bring it down. And continue to do this all the way down the page. Now, because we're going to be lifting some color out, we want to work kind of fast so that it stays nice and damp, and we can still lift this color out. 
If you know that one of your blues is particularly staining, you'd probably want to stay away from that in this one, but for the most part, most blues are going to work. So I'm going to grab my excess water at the bottom, then I'm going to take my scrunched up paper towel and just start to push and lift out big fluffy clouds. Now, if it starts to get saturated, I can tear off just a teeny amount, and we can actually use this paper towel for quite a while, this little piece of paper towel here. Yes, I've got a few Daniel Smith ones and they are beautiful. If yours starts to dry um, a little bit, you can wash your brush, tap it off so it's just a little damp, and you can kind of introduce a little water onto here in the general shape you want before you then lift again, and that's gonna give us nice big fluffy clouds. Now I will tell you guys, this notebook here is the Arteza 140-pen um, one. I don't particularly like the texture of this paper, but I've got like three of these notebooks, so I want to make sure I use them. Um, I think it just, I don't know, I don't like how it settles quite as much, but that's just a personal preference. So if you like a slightly smoother paper, I would not recommend this one, but if you like a really textured paper, this would be a good one for you. And I'm just going to keep adding in little bits, little bits, um, until I am kind of happy with the general shape of my clouds. And it's so fluffy because of the paper towel. That's really kind of the secret of this. Making sure that it's a nice dry paper towel, so ripping off little pieces. There we go. Now, if your clouds are not perfect, that's okay. You can always do a second layer and do this again to bump up the contrast and lift more colors out. Wait till it dries, though. The other thing you can do is whenever I'm painting like this, I just kind of go with what the watercolor is giving me, and I will make the rest of my painting fit around what I like about the clouds so that it will highlight the things that I do like. What if you remove too much? Just let it dry and let's do, we'll do a second layer. It's totally fine. Okay, so we are going to let that one dry here. And I'm just going to start to mix up some. We wanted to do it. The other uh, request was a sunset one. So we're going to do a sunset -y one down here. Let's mix up, mix up some nice colors. Since we're going to be doing some fall colors in the foreground, let's mix up some complementary colors. So let's go for like a nice yellow ochre and golden type sunset pinks and a tiny hint of some oranges. How about that? Yeah, so I do have a YouTube channel, um, Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I've got some longer videos there. I usually do post these there as well. And I am going to be working on some online class type things. I'm hoping by to have them done by the holidays. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, mix up some more colors. So I'm going to start by putting some water in here. I'm gonna mix up kind of an orangey color and a yellow ochre-ish type color. So kind of golden and a little more orange. Starting with a nice clean brush because I've got lots of blue in there. Make sure I don't have any blue. And I'm gonna start grabbing some of that yellow ochre. This is one of my, I never thought that I would like kind of a mustardy yellow so much, but this is one of my favorite colors. If you were on a budget and you wanted to buy nicer supplies, um, the way to do that is to just narrow down a palette of colors because I could probably paint almost everything I paint using a yellow ochre. I personally like a phthalo blue or a cobalt blue, a crimson or a magenta color. And then I would get like a different, a green and possibly a purple. But yeah, you could probably make a really good palette with nicer colors, but just like five or six tubes. Okay, I'm gonna get grab another tester strip. Yes, thank you, Sunny. Yeah, I I use a hair dryer all the time in my personal practice, but um, I don't I don't want to make you guys have to try to mute. I know some people are willing to mute to wait for me to do that, but um. I know not everybody would be able to get to it in time and it would just be kind of irritating. So 
That's why I'm going to work on multiples so they can dry. All right, so I really like the yellow ochre as it is. I'm going to leave that one as it is. I'm going to mix up a second color, starting with some of that yellow ochre so we're kind of in the same color family. And then I'm going to grab um, kind of like an orange and some vermilion type colors to mix in to give it a little bit more of kind of an orangey type glow. All right, I'm liking those two colors. So my general plan for this is we're going to do the same thing where we did the drip line fill, but we're going to actually do a bit of a gradient. So we're going to switch from, we're going to start with this and move to this as we move down. So I've been told that the Crayola... Not the I've tested the washable ones, did not like the washable ones, but I've been told that the non-washable Crayola set is really good. I just got mine in like last week and I need to test that. So um, yeah, that might be a good one to, to try out. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this orange color. And I am going to um, make my line, grab some more. Let's fill that line up a little bit more. We've got a bit of a mookie here. Let's try to wipe that off. She's coming for the painting with us. <laughs> and I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. I'm going to go about a third of the way down the page here with this orange color. Before I start to just dip in and refill my brush a little bit at a time with this kind of yellow color. And for this painting, you could either leave this gradient as it is, or I'm going to bring another complication into this and do some wet on wet stuff after the paper is nice and wet with these two colors. I do like this sunset color, but if you wanted to, I'm going to grab my extra water real quick here. If you wanted to add in some different things, you could grab something like one of these um, magenta type colors and thin this out quite a bit on your palette. Maybe that's even a little bit too much. And you could touch in here to give it the, give a few little kind of um, pink clouds or something. If that's too much for you, you could also come back in with a different, more vibrant yellow, like a permanent yellow, and touch into these while everything is still nice and wet. Again, this doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. If you need to, you can do a second layer once it's dry to try to kind of um, smooth over some of the spots you don't like. I kind of like what's going on. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to let it sit and dry, and we're going to actually move on. And let's just repeat these. Well, no, let's not repeat these two. Um, I want to modify both of these a little bit so you can see two different examples of these. A touch of purple. Um, into this, I wouldn't put purple into the orange and stuff. You might get some um, not so vibrant colors. With sunsets, we want to do our best to actually um, keep colors together that are going to look really nice or mix together nicely. So I'm using a Taclon Bristle Round Brush. Okay, so... I'm going to tape off two more. We're going to do two more and let's modify one. So well, let's modify both of these. For the next one, what we're going to do is I'm going to do uh, this again, although I'm going to make it a little bit more of a gray color. And I'm also going to show you how to mimic rain or like a downpour from the clouds. And then on the, the second one, let's do more of a vibrant um, pink and purple sunset in the uh, for the sky so that we can incorporate some purple because it sounds like we need some purple. Okay, starting by taping these down again. And these two will be a uh, portrait <laughs> ones. You don't have to actually tape in your notebook if you don't want to. I just want to uh, have the nice little lines when I do take them off though. So I'm going to do that. Or they might not be portraits. They might be almost more like squares or something, but we'll see. 
We're going to do two in here. Yes, I love pink and purple sunsets. Although I do just absolutely love when it's like just that golden glow too. I love sunsets. Let's just be real. I like all sunsets. It's one of my favorite things to do is watch the sunset. I don't even know how well you guys can see the tape in here because it's kind of blending in, but I am taping off two little squares. We'll be able to see it in a little bit when we, um, oh, took a little bit too much off there. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, because I might be adding a second layer to my other ones. I don't want to mess with these colors. So I'm actually going to mix up other colors, but I want to kind of use some of this color here. And if you have any of these or um, consider investing in a couple pipettes, then you can transfer over and take some of that pigment. It's also a great way to grab water to add into things. So just in case you want to. So I want this to be a little bit more like a um, grayish rainy day, but I want to start with that same kind of blue base because I did like the general blue color I had. In order to turn this a little more gray, I'm just going to grab some more of this kind of orange color and add that in. And that's going to give me a little bit more gray. Now I want this to be a little bit more pigmented, so I am going to grab a little bit more blue. I'm going to go for that Prussian blue because it's got kind of that deeper color. Any color changes for a sunrise? Ooh, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Full confession, I am um, more of a night owl, so I am not a great expert for sunrises. Anybody have any thoughts on how you would change the colors for sunrises? Oh, it's fine. I'm using the um, Stuart Simple Col um, Culture Hustle Colorious Colors. Again, I'm going to put some more orange in. Okay, this is the uh, grayish color I want for mine. We're going to be doing, um, so these are rainy rain burst clouds, and so that's why I want kind of a gray day, just to give the illusion of raininess. And we're going to be doing the same thing where we're lifting with paper towel, so I'm going to give myself a new little piece. And all I do is scrunch this and then rip so I've got the natural fibers. And we just want this to look a little bit like chaos because if we just tap with the sides, it could actually look kind of cool. But you get some of these patterns uh, from it and those typically don't really look like clouds per se. So if you want fluffy clouds or you want them to be a little bit more kind of real looking, that's why you want to do the um, scrunch and rip with the paper towel. Thank you for the tips on the um, sunrises. Okay, doing the same thing again. The only thing we're really going to be modifying is how we do the lifting. So I'm going to start with this kind of gray color here. Do that here. Reload. Don't forget to hold this at an angle. Use gravity as your friend. Hold this down. And pull this all the way down to the bottom. If you want to, you want to do a gradient. You could also start dipping straight into some water, and that might be good for some of the foreground stuff, just to lighten it a little bit. But you don't have to. I'm gonna quickly grab that extra water, and then when I go to make my big fluffy clouds, I'm gonna do it kind of similar where I tap. But then I want to take a nice dry side, and I'm gonna tap and swoosh. Tap and swoosh down, swoosh down. And that's gonna give you some downward movement to kind of look like a rain burst. Now I need a little more um, lifting from the top so we can really tell these are some clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap out some of that here and swoosh down a little bit. I'm probably gonna be doing a second layer on this one. I don't think I've got enough contrast with that color. 
just not quite dark enough to really make those swoosh downs stand out very well. You can kind of see them, but this is going to kind of give us the feeling of rain. Okay, and then now we're going to mix up some bright pink colors. And you know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to grab my favorite um, magenta color. If there was one downfall of the Stuart Simple palette is the magenta is a little bit too kind of reddish and I really love this core quinacridone, quinacridone magenta. I want to use that for my paint. And again, I'm going to just spray in here. And this might be kind of dried out. This is a pretty old color, so I have to work a little magic here. With a damp brush, I'm just going to kind of tap in here and try to uh, get a little bit out. I just love this color so much. And again, we want to test this because it's going to be a lot lighter than we think. But it's so, I love this one so much. I'm going to add in a little bit more. And then I'm actually going to make my blue or my purple using this as a base color. So here's my nice, vibrant pink color. Let's see if I can get any out. No, I can't. All right, we're just going to have to, if I want to, um, use some of this raw pigment. I'm just going to have to go straight into this little tube. That's too bad. Oh well. So I'm going to mix up a purple here and I'm actually going to do blue with this quinacridone magenta. Oh, I'm so glad it was helpful. So I'm going to start with some of this pink and then I think I'm going to mix like a cerulean or a cobalt would be really nice to mix into this to make the purple color. If you've got a violet, you can totally do that too. Let's start with kind of this cerulean type blue to mix in here and see what kind of a purple we're gonna get. Oh, it's kind of like a nice red violet. Grab some more blue. Oh, I like that color. Okay, I use two different blues and that quinacridone magenta. So I'm gonna do a gradient that's gonna go from this dark purple to this bright pink color. All right, so starting with this, and I didn't mix up very much of this, so I'm probably only gonna be able to get two, about two lines before I start to transition over to that bright pink, and that's gonna to be totally fine. So put one in. Try to get a whole bunch more, put two in, and then start dipping into that pink that I mixed up more of. And just move this all the way down. About here, I'm gonna start dipping into some water just to Kind of make this a little bit more of a gradient all the way down to a lighter color. Also, so it doesn't affect what's happening in the foreground, because we're going to be putting in some stuff in the foreground. If you wanted to at this point, and you don't have to, if you like your gradient, keep it as it is. Or you can dip in, I mean, ideally you'd be able to be able to put a little bit here, but mine is kind of dried up. And I'm going to really just put some of this magenta color in here while it's still kind of nice and damp. All right, I'm going to leave that like that for now, and I might put on some more in a minute. Yeah, the drip line technique is my favorite way to do this. Gravity can really be your friend in watercolor painting. Okay, so here is the key thing to doing paintings like these. Let's 
evaluate them. So the first thing I do whenever I do some backgrounds like this and I finish my first layer, there might be things I don't like, but I don't panic and I don't keep working on them. If I'm like getting to a point where I'm like, oh no, this is just getting worse and worse, just step away. Step away and evaluate. So I'm going to look at these here and I'm just going to kind of take a look and take stock and think, what do I like about them and is there anything I want to change? Now, this one here, I really like my uh, big fluffy clouds and I don't want to mess with them. So even though there's some stuff going on here that I'm not super duper happy about, I can cover that with the foreground stuff. So this one I'm not going to touch. You might have a different answer for that. You might want to do a second layer on that. And you can basically do the same thing you did before where you cover everything and lift that out. And it will still lift out. If you want to preserve some of your white, you can kind of pre-wet the clouds a little bit so that when you do put that other color over it, it will dilute it in those areas that it's kind of sunk into the paper. So you make your own decision on that one. Same with all of these. Now this one, this one has potential, but I feel like it needs a little something else or a little more brightness. So I am actually going to mess with this one. This one we're definitely going to be putting a second layer on, at least for me. You don't have to. Again, this one, I want to bump up the contrast some more. I want that gray day to be a little bit more gray so I can get some more um, of those kind of down strokes that are going to really look like the rain happening there. Again, if you like how yours is, you can make your own decisions. This one, I'm still, I don't know. I still, so a little bit of stuff is still happening to this. I kind of like how some of the pigment has pushed to the sides to make some little like fluffy type clouds. So I might keep that one as it is, or I might mess with it depending on what happens as we paint on the other ones. And this is kind of what you want to do for your paintings is just take a second to look at them and think, can I improve it? Do I need to improve it? Um, what do I want to do to it? Thank you everyone in the comments for helping each other out. I really appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. Again, you want to, if you're going to do a second layer, make sure it's dry enough to do a second layer. And you can kind of tell uh, when the paper starts to unbuckle itself or it kind of flattens out. Another way to tell is to kind of hover your wrist over these to check for the coolness. There is a good reason why moms and, and uh, test like milk the heat here because it's a nice sensitive area and so it can actually kind of detect how cool or hot things are. If you feel a bunch of coolness coming from the paper, you probably need to wait a minute. You can use a hairdryer or you can just use patience. One thing I'm not great at, but you know, we're working on it. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one. I think I just need to bump up all the colors a little bit more. It's just looking a little bit kind of sad to me personally. It's just not what I was thinking about. So I'm just going to basically do another layer. I'm going to do another gradient from this to this again over everything and just see if that kind of combines it. If I need to, I'll do a little more wet on wet action, but we might not need to. Let's just be a little adaptable. So I'm going to start with this orange color here. If you wanted to bump up just one color or the other, you would either just start with water and then move to the yellow or go from the um, orange and move to water. And then you, could, you wouldn't have to use both of them. Okay, I'm going to start dipping into some water just to give a little bit of a gradient. And in general, I do like the colors that are happening here a little bit more, but I'm missing some of that vibrancy. So I am going to wash my brush and grab a really bright yellow, like a permanent yellow, maybe even a little bit of like this kind of lemon yellow color I have. And I'm going to touch that in just a couple different areas. Just to make sure it remains nice and vibrant and it will push some of that away in a second.
Okay, let me take a second while this is sitting here because I'm actually liking this a little bit more and look through some of these because yeah, there's a couple troublesho troubleshooting tips or uh, questions here. Watercolor dries speckly. Is this a paint bad? Any ideas? It sounds like you have a granulating paint. Um, some people really like that and you can either learn to like it or you can find something that isn't as granulating. Um, depending on the colors for blues, I always find ultramarines. I've never liked ultramarines because I don't like how they granulate personally because I want to use them in things like skies and then they granulate. But things like cobalt I find don't granulate as much or phthalo blue don't granulate as much. So it might be a brand thing. It might be a personal preference thing for your speckly paint. Will the water remove pigment already on the page? This is a uh, uh, kind of maybe possibly answer, which is not a great answer. But what I find is depending on how staining it is and how long you've let it sit and dry, if it's fully dry, it's not going to move much of anything that's on there unless you really start to kind of scrub with it. If you lightly brush over it, so use a really light touch with your brush, you're going to be able to keep everything where it is. But here, I'll just show you down on one of these bottom parts. If I were at this point, this is still pretty wet to take a damp brush and just kind of start like here, well, over here. If I just go over it a little bit, nothing happens. But over here, if I start to scrub, I can lift some of this out here. So it kind of depends on your touch. It also does depend a little bit on the paint you're using and how much it stains the paper and how much it's not going to stain the paper. I don't really recommend doing what I just did because this is going to create some um, blooming effects because the paper is going to be drying at different times. But just so you guys can see, you can take some of it out if you want to. If you use a light touch and it's dry, you mostly won't. Unless you have like a really thick amount of watercolor on there that kind of wants to spread itself around. Okay, so I've got this one. I think I've improved it personally. That's just a personal preference thing. If you liked it better before, that's totally fine, but that's how I like it. Set that to the side for now. If anybody has any troubleshooting questions, please feel free to put them in there. Um, I'm happy to answer questions as we go and try to kind of troubleshoot on the fly. And I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush out because again, I'm going to be doing using this grayish color here. Again, I'm going to need my fluffy paper towel. So I'm going to pre-rip both sides of this so I have both sides easily accessible to do the lifting with. And another little tip, um, just in case you are pretty new to watercolor, when you mix up large quantities like this and then we sit and do a bunch of other stuff, sometimes the pigment starts to settle towards the bottom. So a good practice is every time you're going to re-dip into something like this, just give it a quick little mix just to make sure it's fully combined. Otherwise, you might have a little bit of a surprise. It might load a whole bunch of the pigment towards the tip, but just get a bunch of water in the rest of it, and then it will kind of apply really unevenly. So just consider giving it a little mix. Next thing I'm going to do, I kind of mentioned this before, but if I want to do a second layer on clouds and I don't want to lose any of kind of my vibrant white colors, I'm going to actually just kind of brush on some water in some of these areas and let it sit for just a second because it's going to sink in and it's going to dilute anything I put on top of it so it won't have as much of a chance to actually go layer on here. You can kind of see the shine from where I added the water there. Again, give that a little mix, and I'm just going to do this little drip line technique over everything again. Starting up here. Let's move that down so I can grab that a little easier. Don't forget to hold your paper at an angle. And I'm just adding the same color over, but because I'm adding another layer, it is going to add pigment, deposit more pigment. I'm going to move to a slightly lighter color by putting some water in there. Sucking up everything I've got at the bottom with this brush by drying it off real quick. And then again, before everything dries, tap and swoop. Tap and swoop. Getting closer here. Flip this over. Tap and swoop. And now I'm just going to do some little swoops. Sweepy swoops. 
Oh, maybe maybe it's coming down at an angle. <laughs> and depending on how this looks, um, you might be a little skeptical, but we can frame this pretty well with mountains or things in order to really kind of push the issue, basically. I need a little more paper towel. If you need to, you can always take a damp brush, which means you wash it out, and then tap it off just a little bit. You don't want to put too much on here, just a little bit, and that will help us pull a little bit of this out. You got rain clouds? Great! All right, I'm going to try to get a little more just out of the top. Um, you know, usually the top part of the cloud is the brightest. So I'm just going to try to kind of force a little bit of contrast by putting in damp brush. And I am going to scrub lightly. You want to be a little careful. If you scrub way too much, you can damage the paper. But some light scrubbing, most papers will be okay with that. All right. That's probably pretty good. Um, it's not my favorite one I've ever done. But, you know, sometimes they work out better than others. And that's totally fine. All right. Next up, this one. I'm going to keep this one as it is. I really like how it separated and kind of made these cute little, like, fluffy accidental clouds. I'm just kind of digging that. So I'm just going to let that one be. Now we have a whole bunch of different colors mixed up here. And we are going to be making a couple layers of mountains before we go into these fall type colors. And we want a nice dark color for that. So once you're happy with your backgrounds, you can actually choose which of these to kind of monopolize and if there are any that you need to suck up. Um, this, I don't have very much more of this left, and I'm also not going to be doing that color. I just want to free well, so I'm just going to take a little piece of paper towel and suck that up. All right, this is going to be my base for my dark blue color. And I need to pack a whole bunch of pigment in this, so I'm just going to kind of Go to town. I'm going to make like a nice steely blue type color. You could do a steely purple. Uh, I'm going to do a steely blue one. Now I need to re-wet my colors because they've been sitting for a minute. But I'm just going to go to town, adding in a whole bunch of different blues into this just to try to pack a whole bunch of this pigment in here. Again, I personally like to mix a whole bunch of different blues just to kind of get a variation of colors. If you don't like that, you don't have to do that. Okay, let's just do a double check. That's pretty dark, not quite dark enough or not saturated enough, so I'm going to keep going. Let's check on it again. That's a little darker, that's a little better. Again, I want this to be more of a steely blue. So I'm gonna use that opposite side of the color wheel color, that orange. I could have just grabbed some from there. And we don't need to be quite as careful because if you get this nice and pigmented, you actually want a decent amount in order to turn it kind of steely. So I'm just gonna grab pretty much everything that's there. And just double check on it. That's a little more steely. I'm kind of think liking, I'm just going to grab some of this color. I feel like that would be pretty in there. Experiment with how you mix up your colors. Yeah, I like that. I like this color. Nice steely blue. Yeah, the twirl is, is to grab a whole bunch because you're kind of loading up and spreading those bristles around a little bit. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. Now, the way that I do my mountains is we actually mix up our darkest color first, and then we're going to lighten it in a separate well. So I'm going to put some fresh, clean water in this well, and I'm just going to use whatever I had in my brush at the time to make a light version of that color. This is going to be our first layer of mountains. I need mine to be a little bit darker than this because I use quite a bit of color. So I'm going to grab another brushful and mix this into that water here. Maybe one more. Now I am tapping my brush off in between grabbing my brushfuls of my dark color because I don't want to inadvertently introduce more water into my dark color. I want to keep that nice and saturated. 
I'm only gonna be doing two layers of mountains today, so I just need this lighter color and then I need this darker color here. So comparatively, it should be kind of somewhere in between the two. Dark color, light color. I usually put these in uh, directly adjacent pans, but that's just not how my palette's working today, so we're gonna go with it. And we wanna do our mountains on a dry layer. So for me, I can do my first layer of mountains now on this one and on my pink one. I'm gonna wait for a minute to do it on this one and the storm cloud one. If you put this on before it's dry, you're gonna have kind of fuzzy tips to the mountains and you might not like that. Maybe you do like it and maybe you wanna try that. All right, for my mountains, I am going to start by loading my brush up. I'm going to evaluate what's happening on the page and I'm going to kind of outline and try to follow the lines that I like. I'm also going to try to make sure I cover anything up. So for example, I'm not gonna put a valley over here because I really don't like this lighter area oh, that's off screen <laughs> right over here. So I'm going to make sure I actually start with a peak over here with my lighter color. And if you look at the mountains, oftentimes the clouds kind of follow you know, the mountain peak. So if you've got a nice shape, consider trying to follow it. Dry your brush off and grab that extra water at the bottom. And there we go. I've got my first layer of mountains on this one. Again, this one is too wet for me to do anything on yet. So I'm gonna wait. But I can put it on this nice pink one. Again, I want to kind of look at what's happening. Maybe I can fill a little bit of that space here with a peak, but it might be kind of nice just to bring this down over here to kind of just give the eye mainly the chance to really settle on, ooh, what's happening back here? Same type of thing. Maybe make sure you make a little mistake or something. Go up when you don't mean to. It'll give it a little natural variation. And there we go. So the reason we're grabbing the extra water at the bottom, this is actually a really good question. And let me see if I can find uh, some scrap paper so I can show you why. Because it'll take a second. We're gonna have to let it kind of dry and do its thing. Here, I'll grab a tester strip. So. We leave, I'm gonna do a bunch of these here. I just make some marks and I just leave some water on there. I will get back to answering your question in a minute as these start to dry, okay? So you, you'll be able to see it in just a second. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush off just to make sure I don't have any unexpected colors. I'm gonna look at these ones, see if I think I can. So this one's still pretty cool. I'm gonna push it and I'm gonna try. That way you can actually see what happens if I do this too soon. So I'm gonna, again, evaluate what ha what's happening. And on this one, I'm going to actually make the line of my mountains and then I'm going to wash my brush out and just use some water to kind of thin at the bottom because you might like doing this and it will kind of help preserve some uh, space in the front for us to do the fall colors. Making my mountain lines here, washing my brush, taking just clean water, and I'm just going to drag this down. It's going to make a little bit of a gradient. We're going to be adding a whole bunch more stuff in the front. Another thing to consider, if you've got a bunch of kind of golden type colors, purple probably would have been a better choice for mountains on this one. Um, it would probably look a little bit more gray. Uh, adding the blue is definitely going to lean a little more towards the or adding the yeah, blue is going to lean more towards the green side. And I don't mind it too much, but if you want to avoid that, consider that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this one over here. That one actually looks like it's going to, for the most part, stay pretty crisp on the top. There's a couple spots where it's um, going to get a little fuzzy, but it'll be fine. Again, we want to try to force the perspective of what's happening here. So my best down swoops are here and here. So I'm going to try to kind of frame those things with a 
my mountains. And again, I'm going to do that same thing where I'm just going to take some water and just swoosh it down. We're just softening the bottom part there without depositing way too much more. And I do think that that looks a lot more like a rainy day now with the mountains added. Okay, so some of these need to dry a little bit more for you to really see this, but you can see on here a little bit here. See how, even though I made this shape, how it's unevenly dried here. What happens when the paper starts to dry at different times, meaning you've deposited different amounts of water at different times, is where it's drier versus where it's wetter, the pigment starts to settle around those areas and it makes what's called like a watercolor bloom or watercolor cauliflower sometimes too, because it's got this really interesting pattern. And Try this out on your own. Kind of make a few different spots and test what happens when you just leave it versus when you make a stroke and then you grab that extra water and try to get it to be kind of drying at even time frames. You're going to see a big difference in kind of how much coverage you can get. You can use that watercolor bloom technique to get some really interesting effects, but in general for like the painting we're doing today, you typically want to avoid it just based on the style of painting we're doing. If you really like it, lean into it. It's totally fine though. So that's the reason why we're grabbing the extra water. It helps you avoid these little blooms. See how this one, you can already tell that when I put there, I'm starting to get it here and this one I'm not. Now I didn't completely grab everything, so I probably will get a little bit of it, but it is drying more evenly there. So that's also the reason why we do that drip line technique. If I were to take some water here and just kind of brush this over and you're like, Look, I made a flat wash. Well, watch as this starts to dry a little bit. It's already dry, drying down here, but it's still really wet there. And so we're going to get these differing areas of dryness that's going to have some unintended effects as well as you might run out of color and do some dry brushing. Again, all these techniques can be very beautiful used on their own, but you know, just it's all about figuring out when you want to do those things. And in this lesson, we don't typically want to do them as much. And the reason why we do that drip line technique where we drip and do this is all we're trying to do is add in a controlled amount of water at a same at the same time, similar time frame as we move down. So we're wetting it at a predictable um, speed and it is drying behind us at an even speed. And that allows us to get kind of the nice flat color. See how this one is already starting to separate a little bit up here. It's a little more uneven. So that's the reason why we do the drip line. That's the reason why we take some of those, some of that water out. I love using the blooming effects for things like fields, or I even just like to use it to kind of create like highlights and things if I'm painting fruit and stuff. So definitely learn how to harness that. Okay. All right, we've gone on a real tangent here. So the next thing I want to do is mix up a slightly darker color for my second layer of mountains. I've used most of my color here, so I'm going to have to, or actually I don't need to, because we're just doing two. I can just dip straight into this one. Usually I do a bunch more uh, layers of the mountains, but we're just going to do two today. So I'm going to use my darker color here. And for th these ones, I am going to just be doing the top line of the mountains, washing my brush and just using water to bring it all the way down to the bottom. And one thing you might want to consider is when you go to make your second layer of mountains, it's like so tempting just to follow what you did. So consider making at least one change before you do the rest of it so that you have at least a little variation visually. Okay. I'm going to grab this darker color here. I'm just going to double check this to make sure this isn't going to be like way too dark. It's pretty dark, but I think we can work with it. Okay, grabbing this. Again, I'm going to start with a difference. So rather than going up, I'm going to go down. And then even if I do everything the same, it's going to look a little bit different. 
going to wash my brush and just use a little bit of water to pull this down because I don't want to add in way too much color. And then again, I'm going to be grabbing that extra color or extra water from the bottom. And the round brush can is a really good tool for doing that. You just dry it off on your paper towel and suck up that extra. I'm going to work in the same order I did before so that I make sure that they're kind of drying in the same order. So I need to do my pink one next. And you know what, this pink one, I don't know if I'm going to do this one in fall colors. I just don't know if they're going to look great together. So I am actually going to do three layers of mountains on this one. I just think it's going to look prettier. So I'm making an executive decision. So I am making kind of an in-between color between this layer and that one here. Again, I'm going to start with a difference. Go down instead of up. Maybe a valley there before it goes back up. And I'm going to pull this one all the way down. Sometimes, like on this one, I just think that the fall colors and that in the front would kind of compete with everything else that's happening. So I want to lean more into kind of the simplicity to, because this, this one feels very serene to me. So I want it to be kind of simple. Okay, now I can do my bright one here with my dark color. Again, I can start with the difference. And I'm going to wash my brush and pull that down. I'm just trying to preserve some of that foreground color so it's not too dark. Because I'm going to be putting in my fall colors in the foreground on these ones here. Well, I'm going to set that one to the side and do the same thing on my stormy one. Listen to what your instincts are telling you for the kind of shape of the mountains. Don't overthink them too much. I find that if you can kind of just release and just say like, oh, it feels like I should go this way, they're going to turn out a little bit more natural. It kind of does look like a lake in front. So you, I mean, at any point during this, you can stop and you can say like, this is done. Sometimes a painting is just done and you didn't know that it was going to be done then. Um, so yeah, if you really like where something is, you can go ahead and stop. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding these fall colors into the front using kind of just like a little trick to show the texture of maybe where there's a forest. And I'm not going to actually be using any of this. I'm going to be dipping straight into my palette for this. So I'm just going to set all this to the side. And I'm sure a lot of you know this, but in case you don't know, if you've got a whole bunch of extra colors here, just let them dry in your palette and you can re-wet them the next day and use them. Uh, you can reuse these colors over and over again until you've actually used them up. As typically what I do is after I teach a class, I just let this dry and then I do some paintings based on whatever colors I have in my palette. Cheater trees, yes. <laughs> All right, so we're trying to go for kind of the, just the general illusion of like a forest. I'm going to grab another scrap of paper. And I mean, you could spend time trying to paint like trees. Or <laughs> you can just allude to the fact that there are some treetops. So we can actually just take a round brush and we can just take the tip and just touch. And it's going to look like some little kind of treetops, like each one is a little different. We can also change the color as we move on to show. I'm going to grab some of this permanent yellow type color to show like, ooh, look. The leaves are changing here. Maybe even drop it in while it's still wet. You could grab some orange for once it's actually kind of changed. Drop that in a few different areas. And it's going to kind of look like, like the skyline of some treetops or the outline of some treetops. Oh no, I'm very messy. Um, watercolor, I remember when I first started watercolor and 
it's probably Instagram's fault because, you know, you see people who do watercolor and they take these pictures where everything looks like so clean and there's like this contrast between kind of the messiness of the painting and their workspace. Well, now that I've done watercolor for a while and know quite a few other watercolorists, most people are pretty just messy. <laughs> and and that, that seems to be like the perception is, oh, watercolorists are precise and clean, but really most of us are just a mess. Not everyone, obviously. Some people are precise, but not me. And that's okay. All right, so another thing to think about. When we are going to be adding in these treetop part things, we need to look at what's happening. I can use some pretty vibrant colors on these ones um, to do that because I've kind of preserved that white space a little bit or the lighter colors at the front. But it's going to be a little bit tricky to layer it over some of these darker colors. Good news is we can actually look at some of these colors, like this lemon yellow actually has a little bit of kind of some white to it. It's a little more opaque of a color, so it will actually cover things up. And you want to take even this uh, yellow green color. It also has a little bit more kind of opacity to it, and it's going to actually cover over things. So you might want to look at what's in your palette and see if anything is going to be better at covering. So the way we can kind of tell this is, let's see. So if I were to make kind of this scribble line here, a pen would probably be better. You paint in your own mind. That's nice. I don't mind people just watching. Maybe someday you'll want to join us. Um, so if I were to take something like um, this, this yellow is, is fairly transparent, I think, and I were to swipe this over here. It's not going to have much change over that, but if I were to take this yellow here, it actually does kind of cover up. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it is sitting on top of that graphite and slightly covering it up. So you want to try to find some of your ones that are not as transparent as the other ones for your darker colors. Now, naturally, it's going to kind of push some of the other pigments away if you work really wet and you can kind of force the issue with it. But just in general, keep that in mind. Okay, so again, I'm going to be dipping straight into these. Let's just give everything a pretty good spritz to make sure it's going to be easily accessible. I'm going to be taking a round brush with a pretty decent point because I'm going to use that point to my advantage. Maybe consider um, testing a few of your other ones to see which one has the best point on it. Relax while you write your essay. Well, you know, it is important to finish your work, I suppose. So I, I support you uh, listening to make it a little bit easier. All right, I'm going to start by putting a few colors there, a few colors that I'm just going to grab here. And let's just start with some of this kind of lemon or yellow green color here. I'm going to start by just tapping in a few areas. You can dark, do dark forest colors too if you want to. I'm just trying to make this more um, fall themed, grabbing in some of that yellow. Let's lean right into this lemon yellow to really try to get some Colors. Let's tap this into a few areas here. And let's grab some of this orange too while we're at it. Maybe tap that into the bottom over here. This golden color is nice too. I wish I'd preserved a little bit more white space here. So, part of what we're learning today are things that you can do to improve this as well. And that's going to give us some kind of fun colors. You've just woken up in New Zealand. Oh, well, I do load. I do. Um, yes, I'm glad that you are here now. But I do load these up onto YouTube, too. So if you want to follow along later. But you're always welcome to 
try to be up in time. I'm sure the time difference is difficult. So I'm actually not really using much water. I'm pretty much just dipping straight into the pigments and I'm just going to tap these in. You could use vibrant colors like this or um, some of these like this burnt sienna color could be pretty mixed in with some yellow ochre to add in a few areas to show kind of some variation of the colors. Just tap this in and just kind of play with see how see how layering in colors onto the colors is going to look. I'm going to put a little bit more kind of some oranges in a few of these. I'm just going to leave it like that. There we go. Now I got some kind of fall themed colors here. Let's do the same thing on this one here. Going with the same kind of uh, concept here as well. Let's go real orange. Let's put a little bit of this bright green in there too. You could go with a darker green. Maybe a darker green would be nice here. Let's grab some like this kind of army green in a few areas if you wanted to have some variation of color. All right, so I got to know how many people are watching Squid Game. We made the mistake of trying to watch it. Well, I mean, we have been watching it. But we uh, we I we were gonna go to bed, and I was like, we gotta watch something else. This I'm way too wound up. It's scary. I'm not very good with scary movies <laughs> or things. So it is. It's pretty violent. Um, I mean my. The way I watch violent shows is by uh, just staring at my lap a lot. I'm not good with seeing people hurt, but the the storyline of it is really interesting. Yeah, I spend I spend a lot looking at my lap or my dog um, or my husband <laughs> while things happen. I I can't actually I I can't watch when people actually get hurt. It really bothers me. Okay, got a bit of that going here. I'm this one I feel like would be better leaning a little bit more into the greens. And uh, that's just kind of what the painting is telling me to do right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of that in here, maybe towards the top. It's a little better. It's not this one's not my favorite. So yeah, it's pretty much wet on wet or wet on damp. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one, but first I'm actually going to grab my um blue color again because remember I said I, I decided I didn't want to. I didn't want to do anything else to this one other than just do layers of mountains because I really liked it. I'm going to add in my last layer of mountains here. Yeah, this one's just very peaceful for me. Gosh, I don't know. I don't think I could fall asleep while watching it. It is something else. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to go back to adding in the fall landscapes over here. You were just in Estes, the colors are wild. Oh, I haven't actually been up. I live, I live in Colorado, so Estes is about, about an hour drive for me from where I live. All right, I'm going to go straight with the greens at first because I feel like this, this one will look nice. The contrast of colors, I think, are really, there's a good potential here on this one. Let's just put a few different green patches before I 
add in some kind of orangey type colors. So I was skeptical for the first, uh, for the squid game. Uh, I was skeptical the first episode and then, um, I got really hooked. I will say it helped a lot when we turned off the dubbing. I didn't realize it was dubbed at first. And I kept thinking, this does not feel right. <laughs> and then I don't know. I don't know. We were, we were kind of doing some other stuff while we were starting to watch it. And then we realized we had to actually pay attention. All right, and we're just going to add in some more oranges here to show the goldens. And that's, I like this one. The elk were everywhere. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to add in a few more darker greens just to give a little contrast in a couple areas. So if anybody is from Colorado, the one hot tip I have for you for Estes is there is this one shop up there and they have, I don't know what it's called, but it has like a, um, the door to it is not straight onto the street. It's kind of sideways a little bit and it's a red door and they have the best cheesy popcorn in the entire world. I'm going to put in a little more brightness. This one I'm liking. This one I like quite a bit. Just pop in a couple fun colors there. Yeah, your brush can be a little bit too dry, although I would... Mm, yes. <laughs> it's a little bit hard for me to diagnose, you know, on a live, but the answer is absolutely yes. Um, I. You want to be a little bit wetter, I would err on the side of just a little bit too wet, and then drying your brush and sucking up some extra if you need to. Okay, so those are my four paintings for the day. Now, I will give you one other tip. Um, one thing to not get bleeds here or to keep the nice crisp lines. Do you see how a lot of that color has actually bled under where there was tape over tape? So this is tape under here. Well, if we were to, even if we completely dried these different paintings with the hair dryer now, and then we took those off, some of that would still leak out. So what I recommend doing, if you taped any of these down, we use a lot of water here, and there's a lot of water that's kind of seeping in and around some of these corners. I would just let this sit and be for a few days, or not a few days, like a few hours, before you actually try to take that tape off and use a hair dryer in order to do that. So here are the four we did today. Um, let me know if you've got any quick questions. Other than that, I've got to actually go make a bunch of scones for my granny. So if you don't have any more, well, scones and finger sandwiches. I appreciate everybody being here today, and uh, I will try to get this uploaded to YouTube in maybe later today or tomorrow. Other than that, I will see you guys next week. So there are some that are similar on my YouTube, too. I, not with the fall color parts, but the other parts, yes. I will say hi to Granny. She's she. Uh, I'm still trying to get her to paint some more, but she's she's having a little bit of a creative block. So I'll I'll encourage her some more. Thank you, everyone, and I hope everyone has an absolutely wonderful day. YouTube is Rebel Unicorn Crafts.